Let me read to you the headline of a column from Lauren Gunter in the Edmonton Sun, Funding UNRWA, that stands for the United Nations Relief Works Agency, is one of Trudeau's biggest and smuggest blunders. And the author of this piece, Lauren Gunter, joins us now via Skype. Lauren, great to see you again. Good to see you. Tell me a little bit more about UNRWA. I've seen their works with my own eyes, but tell us more about the agency, its funding, and the criticism of it. Well, it, it was set up a couple of years after the uh, uh, Arab countries following the Second World War tried to crush the new state of Israel. And uh, Israel fought back and, and several hundreds of thousands of Palestinians uh, were uh, uh, sent, uh, not sent, but anyway, they, they, they ran off, went into refugee camps. UNRWA was, was set up to provide schooling, health care, shelter, uh, uh, and, and basic necessities, sometimes food if that's needed. Uh, and, and they basically were just a, a relief agency, like the sorts of people you see, you know, helicoptering in sacks of flour and running uh, hospitals in tents. Uh, but it's become a, an enormous agency. It runs on uh, about a billion and a half dollars Canadian every year. Uh, and it, it has schools, hospitals, uh, it helps fund uh, newspapers, radio and TV stations, and all of that, the, all of the agencies and, and organizations that UNRWA helps fund with money from Germany, Belgium, the Netherlands, Canada, the United States, the United Kingdom, all of the Western countries. Uh, most of those organizations that it helps to fund are vehemently anti-Israel and often vehemently anti-Semitic. Mm. Uh, the, the, the schools that UNRWA helps operate in the West Bank, uh, near, the, near the Jordan River, uh, in, in Gaza and other places around Israel, the schools teach that Israel is illegitimate and that it is the duty of Palestinians to push it into the sea. So, uh, you know, there's, it, they're, they're working against any sort of peaceful resolution in, uh, in the Middle East. They would say they're not, but their idea at UNRWA of a peaceful resolution would be to eliminate Israel and let uh, the Palestinians take over what is now Israel. So it, it, it's, it's been a rat's nest ideologically for a very, very long time. Yeah. There's one more thing I'd like to point out. I mean, of course, uh, the state of Israel was founded, the modern state, in 1948, which is more than 70 years ago yeah. now. So there's not a lot of refugees from that event left. It's probably maybe 10,000, not... Oh, well, I wouldn't much. even think it's that many. Yeah. I, would, I would think 100, you know. At, when I was in Israel a couple of years ago, I saw one of these UNRWA refugee camps, and you have to be told it's a refugee camp because it looks like a neighborhood with apartment right. buildings and shops like it is permanent because yeah, of course like the people condo. who live there condo. are yeah. the children and grandchildren so it's it's the only refugee status in the world that i'm aware of where you know almost a century later people who aren't fleeing anything still get to call themselves refugees still get themselves a special agency i mean theoretically i suppose my great grandfather was a refugee in 1905 or 1903 yep. uh, and maybe i could still call myself that today that would be absurd to say that i'm as rooted to canada as possible but that's sort of the analogy in in israel and the palestinian territories well, don't you think and, and and the double absurdity of it would be that you know you, your your grandfather fled whatever oppression he was fleeing, and you were still living in the location that he fled to. That, right. That no one no one was taking you back. The, the thing that that is this is sort of off topic a little bit, but but the thing that always bothers me when we get into discussion of Palestinians in the Middle East and you know Israel's alleged oppression of the Palestinians, none of the Arab countries around Israel. We'll take them back either. The Jordanians don't want them. The Saudis don't want them. The Egyptians don't want them. The Egyptians build walls on the other side of the Palestinians to keep them from flooding into Egypt. Right. So, uh, you know, this is this is not just some one way street that the Israelis. In fact, the Israelis do far more for Palestinians than the than the Arab neighbors. They they will take seriously ill Palestinians into Israel for medical care. They 
allow uh, complex uh, inspections of, of Palestinian bound ships to make sure that what's going there really are necessities and not weapons. Uh, they, they bend over backwards to try and be as accommodating to Palestinians. As can. When I was in, 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 uh, in Israel with you in 2008, we saw a $3 billion highway system that the Israelis were building just for the Palestinians so they could move from one part of Palestinian territory to another without having to threaten the security of Israel along the way. But they were, all, they were working very hard to increase the, the, the mobility of, of people in the Palestinian held territories mm -hmm. uh, at great expense to, to Israel and its taxpayers. That's an excerpt from the Ezra Levant Show. Every day, I do a video monologue, and then I interview an interesting guest, and then I end by reading my hate mail. But you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at therebel.media slash shows.